Welcome back to the knife studio. In this video, we're gonna be doing lots of gold inlay and engraving on the hunting knife we're working on. Let's get into it. We've got the hunter ready for engraving now. I spent about three days practicing and also just trying to mess around with some different designs that I wanted to do. I'm gonna work on this frame piece first. Now I'm gonna take some of this uh, varnish mixture. It's like varnish and something and something and something that I bought for somebody else for doing layout and uh, basically put a coating of it on the metal, let it dry a little bit, and then put some talcum powder on there, and that'll give me a surface that I can come in with a, a fine pencil and start penciling in my uh, scroll work. I'm gonna use some gold-plated dividers to make the spacing for each scroll because I want each scroll to be pretty uniform and, and look really symmetric with each other, so I'm gonna make sure I have the spacing the same on all of them. Beautiful. So what's that do? I just said. So now the metal's got a nice kind of matte look to it. And theoretically, if I did it properly, the pencil should draw on it really well and should stick pretty well and be hopefully make my scrolls look better because I'll have a, a finer line to follow. <sighs> Scroll number one of probably, I don't know, 50? Give me a bunch. I probably need to do the layout on the whole thing. Whoa. That's what? gonna be a lot of scrolls. <laughs> Ooh. What do I got myself into?
This is the little spade cutter that I used to dovetail the groove that the gold's gonna go into. The dovetail will let the gold fill into the dovetail and lock it in place. And I come in on the side of the groove and make these little marks. Something that makes this carbide cutter much more durable is to sharpen it on the, the diamond sharpening stuff. And then I take it out on the scotch bright wheel and lightly, lightly put a little bit of a convex edge all around the, uh, the little spade cutter. And that helps the carbide not to chip and just break. Because if you leave it sharp, the, uh, the carbide will break off like almost immediately. But if you round it with that scotch bright, it'll make it really, really tough and last a long time. It still will chip every once in a while though. Now I'm gonna take it to the leather with diamond compound on it and polish it up a little bit more and then keep dovetailing. But before we do that, I have a question for you. You wanna take your knife making to the next level? If so, we have an online takedown Bowie knife course that we made. We put a lot of time and effort into it and it goes into great detail. If you use coupon code LEARN, you'll save 20% on the course. Check it out, link in the description. And now, back to your regularly scheduled broadcasting. I'm almost done with the engraving for this knife. I've been working on it for over a week now and I didn't think it would take very long. I'm getting ready to start annealing the gold and hammering it into the guard. And then the only thing I'll have left to do is put some kind of little touch of gold inlay on the pommel nut. I don't know what I'm gonna do on there yet, but I want some kind of uh, touch of gold on the pommel nut as well. If you're wondering what I've been listening to with the uh, earbuds and my phone there, listening to Ear Biscuits podcast. I normally save those for when I'm engraving or when I'm uh, doing some really monotonous hand sanding or something. And then we've got uh, the Forge cast and also a bunch of different music stuff on the YouTube. Listening to Kiko, I uh, can't pronounce his last name. He has a YouTube channel from Megadeth and uh, lots of really interesting guitar tips and just listening to him play and stuff.
coffee break. Mmm. Half Starbucks, half Folgers. I'm going to show you how I make a little ball of gold on the end of the wire. And the reason I need to do that is because you can see these, these areas at the end of each of the scrolls where there's like a big open area and the wire doesn't fill that in very well. You could twist the wire around and around until it filled up that area, but it's really quick and simple just to melt the end of the wire and it'll make this nice little ball. So we'll have some extra gold to fill up this big flat area. So I've got a little tiny torch here and I'm just gonna kinda hold it at an angle to the wire because I don't wanna heat up the whole wire, I just wanna heat up the end. Hold it to a little bit of an angle and melt the end of the wire until it forms a little ball. It'll go quick sometimes too and you might end up melting it off onto the floor every once in a while. And there we go, there's a little ball. While I'm here I go ahead and uh, anneal a little section of the gold too. And all you have to do to anneal the gold is just heat it up and uh, let it cool. So now I just take the ball of gold, hold it in that, that round flat spot at the uh, end of the scroll that I need to fill, and go ahead and just smash it in there and it should fill into those dovetails really well. I made the, the ball a little bit too large, so I'm gonna have a little bit of extra waste, but it's not a whole lot, so we'll be all right. And there it is, it's set in there, and I can continue on with inlaying the rest of the wire. Once I get the whole wire in, I'll come back over it and really hammer on the gold to make sure it's filled in the dovetails really well. And there you go, that's inlaid. It's a little better to have excess gold instead of not enough. A lot of times I'll be cutting it so close to where my grooves don't quite have enough gold and I have to use a th thicker wire or something maybe. This time my grooves came out to be a size where I'm having a little more excess than I like. So there is a little bit of gold wasted, but it's probably still only gonna be like, I don't know, 30, $40 on the whole project and that's totally acceptable for me. I could definitely salvage all this gold, but it's really not worth the time for me to try to, to cut all this off with a chisel and, and save it all. I'd rather go through this whole process quicker and just take the 30, 40, maybe $50 gold loss. My time's worth more than that amount of gold for sure. I've got all the gold inlay done on all the fittings. Uh, so the next step I need to do is go ahead and hand sand the fittings and sand off the excess gold, get it all cleaned up. I'm gonna start out with 320 grit and then we're gonna sand these fittings all the way up to 3000 grit and get them ready for bluing. The bluing is a gun bluing process that'll leave a nice durable finish on the fittings that'll protect them and it'll make them jet black, which is what I'm going for. It's gonna be my black mirror finish. It'll make the gold inlay really stand out and pop. This is where the fun begins because I get to see all that work I put into the gold inlay and now we're gonna see how it looks as I sand off all this rough, super thin like gold foil coming off the edges. some super thin little slivers of gold foil falling off when I hand sand these fittings. Your engraving looks like cheese. 
Switch, is it full of holes? My time is worth more. I stop to collect the gold, I might end up poor. Hey, Ma! Look at that! I made a mustache! In gold! The engraving is finished on this knife. We've got to etch the blade, finish sanding everything, do some bluing, assemble, and pin it all together. Oh, and sharpen. Thank you so much for watching. May the forge be with you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye! Wow!